Oh, Facebook. I love both of you. <laughs> I hope you all are having a wonderful day, week, and are enjoying the holidays. I am here to talk to you today about the summit that I was at last week called the Art of Success Summit with David Nagel. And I want to tell you my top five takeaways from everything that we learned and just about the conference and some of the things I am, sorry, there's something outside, I'm really infusing in my work um, after having been there. So very excited about this. And if you're tuning in, I'm so sorry about all the sirens. If you're tuning in live, I'd love to know where you're tuning in from. Just let me know below. And if you are tuning in for the replay, just type replay below and also let me know where you are from. All right, so a uh, little bit of background if you guys don't know who David Nagel is, or even if you do, he is an amazing, amazing entrepreneur and coach and thought leader. And he's one of my favorite, favorite podcasters. And he has an incredible story. He's been doing this stuff for like 20 20, 25 years, but before he did, he was a forklift driver. He made minimum wage. He is from Chicago and just didn't really know what it was like to be an entrepreneur or to really build wealth on your own or anything like that. He was just sort of living this salaried life. And he had a huge wake up call. I think he had several, but the one that he often talks about is when he was um, water skiing with his family, um, and he had two young kids at the time. I don't think they were with him. Uh, I'll, I'll put the link below to this episode where he talks about it because I can't really do the story justice. But the long story short is he fell off a boat and went through a dam, um, a dam that he was not supposed to be able to live to go through. So he went through this dam against all odds, survived, even though most people do not survive through this kind of thing. And in that moment when he was about to go, I guess there was two dams and he made it through the first one and he caught onto a tree. And if he would have gone through the second one, he might not have made it. Hey, Erica, hey, Catherine. So it was a huge wake up call for him. And he sort of just realized, you know, things have to change. Why aren't I doing what I want to be doing with my life? Why aren't I living the way that I want to live? Why aren't I doing what I know how to do? That's one thing he said that really came to him, which is interesting. We can talk about that another time. But anyway, long story short, he's an incredible person. And from there, everything really changed from him pretty quickly. Um, after that, he tripled his, his income from what it was one month to what it was the next month. And then he started teaching other people how to do that. And he always says that, that it all comes from your mind. It's all mindset. You know, that's where this all begins. And that's what he has now made his life's work is teaching people how to change your thoughts in order to change your income. So he's absolutely amazing. I highly recommend his podcast. It's called the Successful Mind Podcast. And um, so I was at his summit last week and it was three days. It was super awesome being with all these other entrepreneurs. Not everyone was an entrepreneur, actually. There was a lot of lawyers, actually. But really, um, people just of all you know shapes and sizes were there that wanted to learn how to change the way they thought so that they could increase their income. And specifically what David kind of is known for, he's called the income accelerator and he helps people turn their monthly income or their annual income into their monthly income so really think about that you know if you're anything like me before I was an entrepreneur I worked at a nine-to-five job here in New York City um, and it was a pretty good job in terms of like my age group and the field I was in but still I was making you know I don't know sixty seventy thousand dollars a year um, and I think that that's pretty average for people in their 20s unless you have a master's degree or a graduate degree or something and you know you are like working as a lawyer or a doctor um, but you're probably not breaking six figures pretty quickly here and even though even that though still sixty or seventy dollars he can help you you know turn into what you're making in one single month so he's absolutely amazing and I was very excited to go to this summit with him so what he really focuses on is is when he talks about mindset he really focuses on the difference and the conflicts between what you're thinking about in your conscious mind where we know we want more money we know we want more growth we know we want these things for our business we know we want to travel whatever our goal is and then in the in the on the other hand where we have our subconscious mind which is fighting to keep us in the same place we've always been and the reason for this you know is simple and makes a lot of sense it's because it wants to keep us where it knows we are safe and where it knows we are safe is where we've always been and right that's our subconscious job is to keep us alive it's like the survival part of us and for most of us growing up that meant you know doing what our mom and dad told us and if we didn't do that then we would be 
maybe abandoned, maybe we wouldn't be loved, maybe they wouldn't, you know, respond to us as much and we wouldn't have that connection, we wouldn't feel safe. So the subconscious mind like had none of that and that's what sort of keeps us though in these rhythms long after we've grown up and long after we've lived with our parents and long after we are supposed to be reliant on anyone else for our own happiness or worried about being abandoned because if you are really secure in yourself then you don't have that issue. Um, yet it doesn't really work like that, right? We stay in these kind of rhythms because we know that they're safe. So David's whole mission is to break down, you know, whatever is holding you back from moving forward so that you can reach those quantum leaps, you can do your next big thing, you can reach those huge goals, and you don't have to do so in a way that's as scary as your subconscious mind might make you believe it is. So without further ado, I want to share with you my five biggest mindset shifts and takeaways from these three days. I think you're really going to like this. These all like give me chills. Okay. We're going to count down because so who doesn't love a little bit of suspense? So takeaway number five is that you're not supposed to know the how behind every new goal that you have. And this is really important. And so I want, I want it to sink in for a minute if this is kind of a new concept to you. David drew, I'm going to just show you. He drew this sort of little graph with like 10 lines on it here. I know this might be different because the mirror is backward. But so here we have, you know, a piece of paper and we have a goal where here we are down here. We're on the bottom left. And then all the way up here in the diagonal area, you have your goal. And so for any of us, you know, we want to get from here to here. This can be for any goal. This doesn't just have to be about money at all. This That money is an easy way to think about it. Like if your income's, you know, $1,000 a month and you want to get to $100,000 a month, maybe that can be your goal. That's kind of a big jump, but you get the picture. But it can be about anything. It can be about I want to go from single to being in a relationship. It can be about I want to go from here to being, you know, 15 pounds lighter. Um, I want to go from here to like whatever, you know, whatever your goal is. And he is telling us that we don't need to know how to get there in order to move forward. And people thinking that they do need to get from here to there is what keeps people stuck for so very long. And it keeps them in the exact same situation they are because you don't know how to get all the way there. Hey, Zaina! And so what he tells us is that all you need to know how to do, like there's looks like there's 10 steps here. All you really need to know how to do is get to that next one step. You are not actually supposed to know how to get all the way there. It's not about like you just doing something foolishly or you doing something in blind faith. It makes a whole lot of sense that you don't know how to get from here to all the way there because if you did know how to do that, then you'd already be there. But you're not, you're here. So all you need to do, all you need to focus on is just going that one step next. So another way to think about it is that there's 10 steps between where I am and where I wanna be or where you are and whatever goal it is. And if you, get really caught up on knowing how to get all the way to the top of the staircase, but you can't see the top of the staircase. It's a new different like terrain to get to the top of the staircase. It's scary. It's slippery. It's dark, whatever it is, then you won't move forward, but you don't need to know. All you need to know is that very next step. You just need to see the next step. And then you need to have faith and trust that the way to get through the steps after that are going to appear as you go. And I am going to explain to you in another takeaway here, why that is the case. But that's just the first thing to remember here is that you don't need to know the how when you're pursuing a new goal. You just need to move forward with the first thing that you can see. And even further, you know, it's all about just deciding that you're going to go to that goal. That is the biggest key here. Decision. Decision is my word of 2018. I'm going to send a whole nother email about that next week. But that's really what he wanted us to understand is it starts with your decision. You do not need to have it mapped out. And plus, that is boring. I mean, when did it become exciting to be like, okay, I know exactly my 10 point plan and I'm going to stick to this exactly. And, you know, that's just all I'm going to do. And yay me. Like that is not exciting, especially for those of us that are entrepreneurs. I don't know about you guys, but I left my nine to five job because I want to live a life of adventure and excitement and creativity. And there is nothing exciting about feeling like I have a 10 point laid out plan to figure out exactly how I'm going to do that. So that's um, number one was to not to understand that you're not supposed to know the how. Okay. Takeaway number four, I'm counting down. <laughs> Takeaway number four is that the price of something is never a good 
indicator for whether or not you should buy something. And this goes for anything. Again, he was mostly speaking to entrepreneurs. So a lot of times this applied to like them investing in a new program, them investing in their business, them investing in some sort of educational resource or something like that. But really anything, it's a, it's a whole different way of thinking. So um, you need to make decisions on what you do or you don't want without knowing the price ideally or even if you know the price you know getting to the point where it's just not about the price this is really important because if you are buying something because it's on sale or because it's cheap then you probably don't really realize it but what you're doing is you're making decisions uh, from a fear-based place you are making decisions about your life and how you're spending your money and your time and your energy based on a place of fear and what I mean is if you are only buying something because it's on sale or you're only buying something because it's cheap or you're only buying something because it's a good deal that is that indicates that you're afraid that you're not going to find that good of a deal or something for that less expensive or that you're not going to be able to afford it at a normal price. All these things, it's a scarcity mindset and we really need to break out of that in whatever way we can. So you need to base your decisions on what you actually want and then and then decide, you know, or and then kind of consider the price after that. And this goes the other way around too. So if you aren't moving forward with a program or if you aren't moving forward with your business or even if you aren't moving forward with a, um, a, you know, a trip or something that's going to be good for you, then you need to ask yourself, is this a yes if I had all the money in the world? Would this be a yes if it were completely for free? Would this be a yes if I had, you know, an extra like $10,000 right now or something like that? And if it is, then I really encourage you to get more creative about how you are going to, you know, come up with that money. And we'll talk in another point in a little bit here on how you can get creative about that. But um, that is what you need to, you know, really focus on and look at it from that way instead. And just one second. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. So anyway, that's where you want to, you know, make your decisions based from. So for example, you know, I remember when I when I really hit when this really hit me, I remembered all the times that I've gone like Black Friday shopping or I've gone shopping for clothes and I've only bought something because it's on sale. All, you know, you ladies watching this, I'm sure have done the same thing. But when it really comes down to it, would you be buying those things if they weren't on sale? And if the answer is no, then you shouldn't buy them anyway. And we all know this to be true because then things sit in our closet. We don't wear them as much because we don't actually like them as much. We only bought them because they were on sale. So the point of this is, I'll just take this all home. You should make your decisions on what you do or don't want, regardless of money. And then, and then if you do want it and it's expensive, you can get creative about how to pay for it. If you don't want it, you know, then great, you can move on. But how empowering would it feel if from now on, just everything that you decided, everything that you wanted to buy, any program you wanted to invest in or whatever, you know, you could just be like, do I really want to do this? And you could really get real with yourself about whether or not this is right for you and decide how that, how you're going to function that way moving forward. It's pretty liberating, right? And we're going to talk about how to find more money in your life here in just a second. So if you're like, oh, great, I'd love to do something, but I don't have the money to do it. Um, then we're going to talk about how to get through that. So number three is to make decisions based on where you want to be not where you currently are so i've kind of heard this advice before but it never really hit home for me as much as it did this week so david talked about how a lot of times people will come to him and they'll be like oh i you know i love your work and i'd love to work with you and i'd love you to be my coach but i i can't do a six figure coaching investment because i, I can't i just can't um or they'll say you know i can't raise my prices because my clients won't pay for it they just won't uh, or, you know, I don't know, just excuses like that. And what he's trying to make us understand is that you might not in your situation now feel like you are the person that can, you know, afford a six figure coaching investment or that you can charge someone a lot of money for your services or something like that. But if you're making decisions from where you are now, then you're going to stay exactly where you are. So you have to take your future self into consideration and you have to Take a stand on behalf of your goals and your dreams and make decisions on behalf of them because no one else is going to make decisions on behalf of your goals and dreams. It has to be you. And so even though it can be scary to you know, make decisions based on a place you've never been before, no one else is going to do it for you. It's so important to understand you are the only person that's going to stand up for your dreams. You are the only person that's going to stand up for your dreams. So if you can't do it, who the hell will? No one. So you know, you need to be thinking like, 
what do I want? If, if your dream is to have a six figure business, you know, and you look at what your life is like when you have six figures in business, you probably are consistent. You probably have people helping you. You probably, you know, have a, an assistant. Um, you probably don't stress about money. So how can you start implementing those things now to propel you toward that? What are you waiting for? No one else is going to come with a car and magically drive you to the place you're wanting to be. You have to get yourself there. And the only way you can springboard yourself there is by setting yourself up in the environment where you can foster that dream to come to life. It can't come to life where you are now or you'd already have it. Does that make sense? I hope that I'm not getting too like talking in circles, but it's just a really important message to sort of bring home. Okay. The second, my second favorite takeaway is that, okay, this comes back to one of the other points we talked about. How I don't have a month, I don't have the money is never an excuse ever. And so David had us do this really powerful exercise where we came up with an amount of money that we wanted um, for this month or something like this. So let's say it was twenty thousand dollars, and then you kind of had to do a T chart, and on the right you would write um, why I can't come up with this amount of money, and on the left you'd write um, what, how I will. And basically he had us go through and complete the how I wills. And then with every how I will that we thought of, if something came up that was like, no, you can't do that. Write that in the bucket. That was the, the, why I can't do that bucket and put next and go on to the next how I will. And what this did was, you know, by the end of it, we all had a really extensive list of how to come up with this $20,000. And you might be sitting here thinking like, I have no idea how to come up with $20,000 if I had all these ways that I would do it. But you do. You do have ways to come up with it. You know, you have to get outside of the box thinking. You have to think, do you, could you, you know, take out a business loan? Could you go to the bank and apply for um, a loan from them? Could you sell something that you have? Could you raise your prices? Could you put one of your products or services on sale? Uh, could you freelance temporarily? Could you, you know, I don't know, Airbnb or apartment? Like there's all sorts of creative ways. Now I know you might be thinking like, well, yeah, I could probably do those, but I don't want to do that. I hear you. The point was not to have us like leave this seminar and go do all those things to make $20,000. The point of this exercise, which I very much encourage you to do is to wake your mind up to the reality that there is money out there always. And if you want the money out there, then you can go get it. It is yours for the taking. Um, and no, this doesn't mean it's a sustainable solution to like sell everything you own every month or anything like that. But if you have something that's exciting to you, you know, going back to our other point about how price is not a good indicator on whether or not you should move forward with something, think about, okay, well, this is something I really want to do. You know, if you arrive to that decision that this is something you want to do and you're like, this is it, this is a yes for me, but then you have to somehow come up with the money to make it happen. And if it ends up being a big investment, then I recommend doing this exercise and breaking it down and getting creative and getting resourceful. And that is like the key word of entrepreneurship is getting resourceful keywords. So this is great practice to do that. You know, really tune into how else could this work? How else can this happen? What can I do that other people can't? Why am I going to succeed when other people won't? It's so important. So once you realize this, you know, it's very liberating to know that your like excuses of not having enough money are stories you're telling yourself. And that means that there's stories you've probably been told from other people. And that also means you can rewrite your own story. You can rewrite your love story of your life and your business. You get to write exactly how this is going to turn out and exactly what things are going to look like. You get to decide how you want to feel. You get to decide how worthy you are spending what amount of money. And you get to go through your days in complete confidence that you are, I'm like going to cry now, but that you are a child of God. You have the right to everything that you've ever wanted the money is out there for you to go you know and grab and use if you allow yourself and if you write that story for yourself but if you aren't aware of it and you continue living in fear and within these false beliefs that there's not enough out there for you or that you're not ready to do something then that's going to be a reality and you're never going to claim what is by birthright yours okay next one is the final one and this is my favorite one this always gives me chills and this is such a core principle of David's teaching. For those of you that are just tuning in, I'm giving my five top takeaways from a summit I went to last week called The Art of Success with David Nagel. And um, he's an amazing podcaster. He's like a money mindset and money accelerator, you know, entrepreneur. And um, I want to, sh I've been sharing my top five takeaways. And we are now on my number one takeaway, my favorite thing that he teaches. Um, and this has been, I really just want to share that this has been probably the single 
most helpful mindset shift I've made in order to build the level of success that I have and, ha and that has supported me in growing at the rate at which I've grown. And so this is really big, especially for my fellow entrepreneurs out there, but really anyone. Okay, here we go. It's knowing and really learning and understanding that if there is a challenge, there is always a solution, always, and bear with me. So simply put, the takeaway is that there is always, always, always a way. So what this is based off of is one of the universal laws. You know, there's like the universal law of gravity, <laughs> which is a, a physical law. This is a metaphysical law, but it's the law of polarity. And it's basically just the law of opposites, which is the world we live in. And, you know, it's easy enough to look around and understand this for anyone. Um, we wouldn't have hot in this world if we didn't have cold. Otherwise, we wouldn't know what hot is because we wouldn't have the contrast. Um, we wouldn't be able to feel happiness if we hadn't also felt sad. I know it sounds great to be happy all the time, but you actually wouldn't feel that happiness if you didn't feel sadness once in a while. So, you know, there's always an equal and opposite reaction for everything. And so what does this mean for us? This means that for every problem, there is a solution. And for every desire that you have, there is already a way for you to fulfill that desire. Nothing exists without the opposite part to it. It's just not the way that our physical world functions. So, this is the most freeing thing ever because this helps you realize that if you are going and changing your life and doing something big in the world and doing something to really, you know, set yourself apart and on fire and you're excited about something, you're going to have roadblocks. It's part of the deal. You're going to have times when you don't know what you're going to do, when you're not sure what, where to go next. You're going to have those bumps in the roads. But if you know this, if you really understand this law of polarity, then you will not see it as something that is a, a wall or a place for you to stop. You will understand that if a problem exists, then the solution is right there also. You just have to find it. And this is really what makes or breaks entrepreneurs. You know how they say that the only 5% of them make it or whatever the statistic is? This, I really think, is such a key. You have to train your brain to see those obstacles, where up, to see opportunity where other people see obstacles. I'm going to say it again. You have to train your brain to see opportunity where other people see obstacles. So when other people do take, you know, signs that they're not supposed to move forward or they take a challenge as not something that they're able to overcome or they take some sort of, you know, bump in the road as something that is not going to be able to be fixed, then they stop. And I'm not trying to be insensitive here. I know sometimes things can get really, really tough. I really do understand that things can be hard when you're not making any money or when you feel like things aren't working or when your business partner quits. But let me tell you, David Nagel, the guy who taught me all of this, when he was in his first couple of years of business, he had $5 million embezzled from his company and he had his entire email list, which was his entire client base, uh, stolen. It was this whole, it's this whole tragic story. But he had everything vanished from him, everything taken from him, and he was still able to know that because he was now in a situation that was challenging and that was an obstacle, there must exist a, an opportunity for him to get out of it. And he stuck with it, and now he has a multi-million dollar coaching business, and he's so much happier and a better businessman because he went through that experience. I know that's oversimplified. It's really complicated and wasn't easy. But my point I'm trying to make is that if you can be one of those people that always knows that for any challenge you are being faced with, that then there is a solution that is within your grasp. And you're one of those people that know that if you want something, if you are listening to this and you are like, I want to make $5,000 this month, or I want to start my business once and for all, or I want to quit my nine to five job, or um, I want to go to Tahiti next year. If you have a desire in your heart, if you truly have it, then there is already a way for you to bring it to life. It's up to you to find it. That's all it is. And again, this brings in this excitement. This is fun. This is like where you get to get creative about how am I going to make this happen? Where am I going to find this? Who am I going to meet? What am I going to discover? What am I going to learn about myself or the world? Where am I going to go? You know, this is what makes it fun. And if you just have this really deep understanding that it is out there, you don't go into this fear or freak out about whether or not things are going to work or is this a good idea or are you going to be a failure because the answer will always be there if you are open to receiving it. And let me tell you, you are not going to be open to receiving it if you are scared out of your mind and in this negative, pessimistic, nothing is going right for me state of mind. 
It's important to stay positive, and something that will really help you do that is by continuing to understand that there's always, always, always a solution out there. It's closer than you think. Okay, those are my top five takeaways. Just a little bit of a recap. Thank you guys for tuning in with me. Um, number five was that you're not supposed to know the how when you're going toward a goal. Number four, or sorry, number five is that you're not supposed to know the how. Number four is that the price of something should not dictate whether or not you want it. Number three is that you should make decisions based on where you want to be, not where you currently are. Otherwise, you'll just stay stuck. Number two is that I don't have the money is not an excuse to not move forward with something because there's always enough money out there. And number one is that there is always, always, always a way. Every obstacle has an opportunity if you can program your mind and your optimism to see it and receive it. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you all have really happy holidays. And um, if you watch this or you watch the replay or whatever, I'd love to know what your favorite point was or if any of this really resonated with you or you know how you might use this in your own business as well because I know that my head has just been spinning with new ideas ever since I came back from this. Um, and I hope it really sets us up for you know a positive frame of mind planning 2019. And if I can just give you one piece of advice, something that I continually work on, it's just to really try to plan and get excited and make decisions and move forward in a place that has as little you know determinant of fear as possible. So if you see yourself making a goal for 2019 and you reel yourself back because you're scared it might not happen or um, you're scared, you know, that if you don't do something, it might never work again or something like that. Really try to just observe when you are making decisions because you're afraid of something. You don't have to be mad at yourself. It doesn't mean you're going to have all the answers or become a genie that never feels fear anymore. But the more you can tune into it, the more self-aware you'll get and the more in tune with your own intuition you'll get and the better decisions you'll make. Okay. I hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you soon.